It is six o'clock and time for our very first Parent Academy presentation for 2024. So welcome, Rock Hill, and we're so glad you have tuned in tonight. We have an awesome presentation for you and so much information to give you. My name is Dr. Nancy Turner, and I am your Director of Behavioral and Mental Health Services for Rock Hill Schools. Our co-host is here with us tonight. Good evening, Cindy. Good evening, Dr. Turner, and good evening and Happy New Year, Rock Hill. As Dr. Turner said, my name is Cindy Talvin Kimmel, and I'm the Director of Parent Smart Rock Hill Schools Parent Education Partnership, where parents are at the heart of education. So if you are tuned in to learn more about programs and resources for South Carolina, <laughs> for families and their young children, you have come to the right place. Exactly. So Cindy, if you will exactly. introduce our speaker. Tonight, we have the pleasure of having Rachel Hatton Moore join us, who is one of the early childhood experts in the state of South Carolina. Rachel LMSW is South Carolina's inaugural two-generation coordinator. As the two-generation coordinator at the South Carolina Early Childhood Advisory Council, Rachel's role is to support and advance efforts to align agencies, policies, and delivery systems in support of whole family practice. She serves as the project manager for First 5 SC. The two-generation approach is a powerful tool in creating efficiencies, centering families, and improving outcomes for families. Rachel's background involves over a decade of work in developing programs and managing projects that elevate the voices and lived experiences of families through human-centered design. Please join me in welcoming Rachel Hatton Moore. Thank you all so much for having me. I really appreciate being here and I look forward to speaking with all of you tonight. I do have some uh, slides that I'll be sharing with you. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those up and um, you'll see my face there um, and you'll see it here. But um, thank you, Cindy, so much for the introduction. Um, I know that that is all a bunch of uh, really fancy words uh, for what I do. Um, but the way that I see what I do most of all is center families and center parents and um, make sure that uh, the public services agencies are working together in concert to support whole families. And so um, there's a number of ways that um, I do that and a number of projects that I lead um, in order to do so. So I'll be talking primarily about First Five South Carolina tonight, but I'll also talk about some of the other initiatives of the ECAC, the Early Childhood Advisory Council, um, in uh, supporting parents throughout the state, um, not just in Rock Hill. So uh, one of the projects I have the, the pleasure and privilege of working with is the South Carolina Family Voice Council. And the South Carolina Family Voice Council started in um, August of 2021. And um, we have had now rotating into our third service term. And we have parents from all across South Carolina. And the thing that they all have in common is that they have children ages birth through five and that they and their family have participated in publicly funded programs and services. And so that's things like um, 4K and it's also things like WIC. And so uh, we wanna make sure that families are of course at the center, their voices are heard and that they are our partners in designing and redesigning the way we operate the early childhood system in our state. So uh, the reason I'm telling you about this is not just because I love this work and not just because I think it's uh, very important and pivotal uh, to what we do in the early childhood system, but I also want you to know it's an opportunity for you to serve if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, if you have uh, a passion for sharing your stories and hearing the stories of others and helping meet with public leaders of programs and services to let them know 
um, how, how those programs impact families, what changes could be made to make them better, um, to make them um, more efficient, to make them serve families better, and ideas that you have for ways that it could grow in the future to reach more people and to um, be an even better benefit to um, parents in South Carolina and their children. And so we do have eight seats right uh, right now open because we just had a term rollover. And so we are looking for parents all over South Carolina, but we would love to have some parents from Rock Hill who have young children. We have a monthly meeting and we provide a stipend for meetings attended. And so that um, is to compensate parents for the time that they spend um, as uh, experts um, because you were the experts on your lives and your children. And we uh, welcome you to share that expertise with us. And we're um, honored that you do so. So um, I um, look forward to hearing from you. There's an interest form and um, that link, I'll show it one more time. The link is right there if you'd like to complete the interest form and feel free to share with other families you know throughout South Carolina. So this is what the early childhood system looks like in South Carolina. And note that this is just public funds. So this is state and federal funds that flow into South Carolina's public, uh, public early childhood system across a number of agencies. And the Early Childhood Advisory Council is a legislated council and it um, it involves all of these agency, agencies that you see here in the middle. And so this represents uh, over 60 programs and services that are related to early care and education and early childhood. And we also work with ETV, the State Library, and the Commission on Higher Education and our Interagency Collaboration Committee, which is a way for us to um, align our work and talk more about um, what everyone is doing uh, to support families and initiatives. Um, and really um, the ECAC and the ICC drive forward our South Carolina Birth Through Five plan. Um, and so we welcome you all to look at that and that, um, really aligns all of our efforts and our strategies and uh, the ways that we aim to accomplish these things across South Carolina. But I want you to notice that these are all programs that are at different agencies. Sometimes they're called something different than what the funding source um, calls it. And sometimes the funding might come to one agency, but be administered by another, um, either um, you know, contractors throughout the state or um, maybe even another state agency. And so it can be really confusing for early childhood system um, workers to navigate this and know what is available to all of South Carolina's families. And if it's difficult for people who do this work every single day, um, it is also very difficult for families. And we have heard that from families. So I'm gonna start by showing you um, one of the things that we started with before we had first five. And this is still a portal that's available today. And uh, I, I welcome you all to go to it. But um, these are the four agencies that represent just early care and education in our state, just that small world that isn't even the whole array of services. And so we began with these first four agencies to create Palmetto Pre-K, which is South Carolina's public preschool portal. And so at palmettopreK.org, families can come here and find out if they would be eligible for public 4K and then navigate to uh, schools and districts and child care centers and Head Starts and First Steps 4K um, centers in their own community. And so it's wonderful because we know that this is something that families have, have wanted to be able to find easily. And we heard that from a needs assessment. So um, the 2019 Parent Needs Assessment, which was funded by the Preschool Development Grant, let us know that parents wanted more time with their families and they wanted to be able to find high quality educational opportunities and service opportunities for their families to meet their families' needs. And so Palmetto Pre-K is a way that families can find that. And there's three simple steps. First, determine if you're eligible and you just enter some simple information, um, which is really similar to information you'll enter on first five. And so you'll see that in a few minutes. The second one is once you know if you're eligible, find a preschool location near you. 
and then you can apply. And if they have an online application, you can apply through um, you know, their sites. You might also wanna apply through the first five common application. So these are ways that you can find preschool. You can also find preschool on first five. And like I said, we listen to families as I said, the center of everything that we do. And these are some of the quotes from members of the Family Voice Council about how difficult it can be to find services. As a parent, you have to fill out multiple applications several times, and it takes a lot of time. Finding support can be difficult, and it takes a lot of time to wait at offices in person. So these are just a few of the things we heard about how difficult it can be. Um, one of the former members of the Family Voice Council has nine children, and she uh, wanted everyone to know that uh, it takes sometimes a full day to apply and register for school, for example, because um, you know, you have to fill out uh, the household information multiple times for each child. Well, you'll see on our common application through first five, you enter that once and it populates on the multiple applications. So we can't make more time in a day, but we can help families find more time by creating efficiencies on our end for them. So our vision across the entire early childhood system and the early childhood advisory council is that all children will be successful. And to do that, I think that all families must be successful. And so we took those 60 public programs and services across 11 agencies and we put them into five simple categories, childcare and early education, health and safety, special needs and early intervention, food and, nutrition, food and nutrition, and parenting and family support. And these represent a, a, like a whole array of services, right? It's, it's holistic and it represents what families need, want, and deserve. So First Five is a project that I've been working on um, since, um, since the beginning of its development. And so um, we started building First Five in April of 2021. And then we launched it in February of 22. And so um, we have almost two years of information right now about um, how the site is being used and um, how the screener particularly is being used. And so we know that uh, we have had over 160,000 visitors. We have had um, over 10% of those uh, visitors complete the eligibility screener, which in industry standards is a really high what we call conversion rate for asking someone to complete an action when they go to a website. So we know families are hungry for finding out what's available and what can help them and what can uh, help them learn about different services that um, can really help their children advance. And you see a cell phone here because First Five is optimized for mobile devices. We learned from Palmetto Pre-K that about 90% of the visitors are coming on mobile devices. That's just how the world works now, right? Like we always have our phones with us. And so um, we wanted to make sure that First Five worked in the ways that families actually receive and look for information. So, um, this is what it looks like on my desktop because that was easiest for me to screenshot. So um, just know it's going to look slightly different, but just as pretty on your cell phone. And if you're watching this, I welcome you to follow along on your cell phone. It's not often that a presenter says, pull out your phone while I'm talking, but feel free to do that. And um, again, the website is first, the number five, sc.org. So when you go to First Five, front and center, you'll see check your eligibility for over 40 services. And when we were designing this early on, we had that in another place of the website further down. And when we tested this with families, they said, no, it's hard to find and things are hard enough to find. We came here to find information. So make this the first thing right up top that we can easily get to. So you click that easy button and it takes you to the first screen, which is contact information. So um, we're gonna follow the story of a fictitious person named Pamela Cooper. And she lives in Lexington County, which is um, you know not far from the capital of South Carolina. Um, I've, I've lived in uh, Lexington for many, many years. And so um, 
Miss Cooper works at a, uh, a factory and um, she has uh, two young children and um, we'll be following her throughout the eligibility screener, just as an example. So um, she enters her information and then she talks about how, you know, she selects how she heard about us and she heard about us on, uh, you know, Facebook where you're at right now. And you might even see an ad while you're on Facebook today. And so then she consents to share this information. And the reason she does so is sometimes some of our partner agencies are able to access just her name and contact information, her child's age, and if she may be eligible for their program. None of the other household information is shared with those partners at this stage. And so they don't see um, any of the particular buttons that you say about your household circumstances. They won't see your income or your child's date of birth. That's not even stored. Um, that is uh, separate from the information that they would receive. We're really careful um, with everyone's private information, just as we would want our information to be protected. And so it is uh, compliant with HIPAA and FERPA. The next screen, she enters her child's date of birth. So um, August, 20, uh, August 20th, and uh, this is an old slide. Um, so pretend that that says 2020 so that her child would be eligible for 4K, right? She's got a four-year-old. And uh, then she enters her address in Lexington, Lexington County. Because what we know in South Carolina is that um, whether you're in Horry County and you're a grand, uh, grandmother raising a grandchild, or if you are in Oconee County or in York County, um, you might have a different array of programs and services available to you in your area based on your community's needs. And so um, this next screen collects information that will show you what programs and services you would be eligible for based on your address, based on your child's age, and things that um, are different eligibility criteria. And so things like my child or family is experiencing homelessness, that is, uh, that is a piece of information that would help you qualify for multiple programs and services. But on first five, it only asks it once. And so we did test this with families to make sure it was clear it was easy to read, it was easy to understand, it was written in language that is, um, you know, really clear to everybody because um, sometimes uh, government uh, applications and government um, eligibility screeners can be um, in really complicated language. And so we wanted to make sure that it was really accessible and inclusive for everyone. And the other thing that's amazing about this is all of the programs and services that are on First Five agreed to this language. They uh, agreed that this was uh, a way for families to be able to clearly understand whether they would be eligible or not and to communicate this information about their family. So on this next screen, you enter income. And the reason for this is some programs require um, families to be at 50% of the federal poverty guidelines. Some families um, need to be at 100 or 150 or 135 or 185 or 200 or 213 or 300%. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I don't keep those numbers memorized, right? And so First Five does all of that through computer magic. And so um, you would just have to enter your um, family's annual gross income. And um, we know that lots of programs calculate uh, eligibility by income slightly differently. So they might count a few things that another program doesn't, but they all agreed that for this, this was a way to get the most families as close as possible to determining eligibility. And so they agreed that just simple annual gross was the easiest way to help families. And once you enter those four or five simple pieces of information, it takes you to what I call the prize screen. So Miss Cooper would be eligible and her children or her child would be eligible for all of these programs here. And these are the ones that are currently on the common application. And we just launched the first five common application in May of this year. Now there's lots of programs that aren't yet on the common application and we're working to include them. 
but you can still navigate to that information and find it so that you can find out what's available to your family. And then you can apply through them separately. I want you to also pay attention to um, down here, this little blue button that says, email me my results. Well, I know that not everybody, myself included, has time to read through all of this at once or click on these pages to learn more about the programs to decide what you might want to enroll in. But if you click email me my results, it'll all be sent to you so that you can come back at your leisure and look at it later. And so sometimes I know from site data that it might be four o'clock in the morning when you have the opportunity to look at this information. So um, emailing you the results means that you can come back when it's convenient for you. And um, that is a big change in the way government operates. Um, some of this information is not easy to find on government websites, and it's across all of these government websites. And so here you can have it all brought together. You can also complete for another child. We heard from, you know, families who were telling us and testing it that it's really frustrating when you have to enter the same information multiple times. And if you're on a website like this, why should you have to enter the same household information a second time for your second and third children? So if you complete for another child, it takes you back to the beginning of the screener, and then it will show the um, contact information you've already entered will still be there. Your household income will still be there. And all you'll need to change is this uh, date of birth for the child for your second or third children or more. And uh, you'll need to select any household circumstances that might be particular to your child, such as um, Perhaps you have a foster child in your home and um, you uh, want to make sure that's selected or you have a three-year-old who may have been suspended from a child care center. And so you would need to select that. So um, that will show you a different program than um, perhaps your other child that your child would be eligible for. And so um, then those would appear on the other screen or back on this eligibility screen. And then... Um, for anyone who may be listening who works directly with families, say you're an early interventionist or a parent educator, um, if you're doing home visits with families or you have families coming into your office and you want to use First Five with them, that's wonderful because I'm a social worker and I know from experience that um, I had a really hard time knowing all of the things that a family might be eligible for in their community. It was sometimes really overwhelming to keep up with all of that information on my own, and I never wanted to miss anything. And so First Five can help families, and it can also help you as direct service providers not have to have this all memorized. And I also want to shout out a plug here. Um, we are working with uh, the University of South Carolina um, and their uh, training through the uh, Center for Child and Family Studies and the College of Social Work to have a training for direct service providers. And this is a live one hour training and our next dates are in February. And so um, you can go to first5sc.org slash training and it will show you um, those dates so that you can register from there. Or you can email me and I, I will connect you with that. So uh, another thing that you can do, you can also do this on Palmetto Pre-K, is find the providers near you. So you can enter your address, select the program you're interested in learning about, and then it will sort by the distance um, from your home. Now, the common application. When you're back at that price screen, you know, there was that, prop, that, uh, that button, apply for services. When you hit that button, it takes you to this screen. And so um, you can pretend you're checking out at Belk and apply as a guest, um, or you can create a First Five account. When you create a First Five account, you are then able to um, save documents to a secure document vault, such as your child's uh, birth certificate, any household income information, and it is securely kept there. And that can be convenient because you might be applying for other um, services later, maybe through First Five or through another website, and you'll need to access that again. You've got it stored there. And then um, when you uh, create your account or when you sign in again, 
it will take you to the basic information screen. And when you're at the basic information screen, this is the information that is on all of them. So this keeps you from having to fill it out multiple times across all applications. So Ms. Cooper puts in the information and the things that were already on the eligibility screener pop in. So she doesn't have to repeatedly enter that information. The only thing she'll have to enter here is the child's, her child's name and date of birth. And um, that's because that wasn't collected on the screener because we were really careful there about only collecting the information we needed for you to find out if your child was eligible for a service. But here, because it's an application, there's a higher level of information that we need to give to the agencies so they can make those determinations, those final determinations about if you're eligible and how to enroll. And so there is another consent button here, and that lets us share your application with the partners that you're applying for. So once you enter your child level information, um, it takes you to this screen and you can apply for the services that appeared on the um, apply for these services screen. And um, because you might already be enrolled in one or because you might not be interested in applying for all, there's still separate applications within the common application. But what it does is it pulls that basic information in so you don't have to enter it again. And if there's a question on one, you know, on one um, application, say about a, um, a second parent or someone else who lives in the house or your race and ethnicity, if you select that and it appears on any of these other applications, it will be selected there. So you don't have to enter that again either. So we call that progressive. It's progressive throughout these. And so um, once you hit submit, it'll tell you what the next steps are, when you can expect to hear from someone, how you can expect to hear from someone. And it also emails you that information and then it transmits it to the agency. So they're able to process it. And um, you can apply for uh, multiple programs here. And once you apply, it'll show um, show that you've applied. And if you need to save it and come back later, um, it'll show it as in progress and you can pick it up again and finish. Um, and so um, if you're looking for additional programs or you wanna apply for um, WIC for one of your children, but um, another of your ch children um, may not need it, um, that's just an example, I don't know you know, um, just as an example, you would be able to complete that screener again, just like you did before and pull that information in for second children or additional children. And we know that first five is working. And so um, here is a quote from uh, Katie, who is a parent in South Carolina. And she says, when our two-year-old daughter was diagnosed with an extremely rare syndrome that impacted her hearing, we didn't know where to start. First Five South Carolina connected us to the resources we needed and coached us through the application process. Having all that information in one centralized place was key to getting the right kind of help fast. So um, I know I, I kind of breezed through that information, um, but um, I am happy to answer any questions that might appear in the chat and uh, look forward to um, answering any questions. Well, that is quite a lot of great information. I actually do have a question for you. Uh, what about our, our English language uh, learners or families that don't speak English? Uh, talk to us a little bit about that and how they can um, walk through all of this. It can be translated. There is a button on the very front of First Five that says translate to Spanish because we know that um, that's one of the languages that's most commonly needed in translation here. And then from there, it uses Google Translate. So for example, if you need to um, have it translated into Portuguese, um, you can select that option as well. So um, it is connected and it can be translated that way. Our application can also be, um, the common application, those can also be translated into other languages. That's great news. Cindy? Um, Rachel, so for parents, you talk about preschool children. What age um, are we talking about? Are, are we talking about somebody who is expecting? Are we talking about somebody who has a five-year-old? What ages? 
Well, for example, um, York County First Steps, which I'll talk about in just a moment, um, they offer a nurse family partnership program. And um, to um, enroll in nurse family partnership, you have to enroll by a certain number of weeks of gestation. And I'm not going to try to say that number because I always get it wrong, but it's somewhere in the like 26th to 28th week. Exactly. And so um, there is a way to um, you enter your child's expected date of birth. Um, if you are applying for prenatal services. There's a few other services in South Carolina that enroll prenatally, such as parents as teachers. Um, mm -hmm. And um, sometimes in parents as teachers, you can also enroll up to your child being three months old. And so um, the beauty of First Five, I think, is that whether you are expecting another, an, an additional child in your household and you have a three-year-old, you're able to find services for both of your children. Exactly. And you mentioned parents as teachers, and that's what we as Parent Smart offer through the Rock Hill School District. And we serve prenatal through the age of five. Um, and a lot of the programs across the state, some serve birth to three, some th serve three to five. It just depends. I, I love the fact that it's all in one location. I did put the Palmetto Pre-K and the first five SC links on the um, chat on the Facebook page for anybody that's listening. Great. Thank you. Uh, I do have another question. We have a lot of grandparents, as you know, that are are raising sweet children, and they may not be as um, computer savvy. Is there a way to either get help a help desk uh, or or some type of support to, you know, to get them through the process? Well, there's not a help desk, but we recognize that. Um, this information may still be overwhelming. There's a lot of information about public services and it might bring up a lot of questions and um, you know, families might have special circumstances that they need to talk to someone about. And so uh, on the main screen of First Five, we also have a tab for need more help. Huh. And from the need more help page, you can navigate to um, some of our partners throughout the state, which are Help Me Grow, Family Connection of South Carolina, and uh, child care resource and referral. And then also our uh, 46 local partnerships for first steps. We have one in every county. And so now I'm going to read a brief message, if you don't mind, from yeah. David Lisk, who is the executive director of the York County First Steps. And sure. um, he uh, says that, um, you know, they have been incredibly supportive of our portal. And I know that. And um, they have a continuing uh -huh. option for families to connect with them directly. And so, um, Families can uh, receive services directly um, or through a community partner in York County, and they connect to York County First Steps to find their way to those services. So um, they have a number of community collaborations to draw on to assist families with preschool children. And these collaborations include strong partnerships with our four school districts, including the Rock Hill School District. So um, we invest for all first steps. We invest in preschool interventions and uh, York County has a family resource center um, for families. And so um, in Rock Hill, this is at the Sylvia Circle Family Resource Center, which is where Parent Smart um, and our offices are located. Exactly. And there's actually a network of family resource centers across the state. Um, and for a listing of those, if parents are interested, they could go to the Children's Trust website and they can see that list of family resources that provide resource and referral that would be able to link you to a Parents as Teachers program or a First Steps program and certainly through First Five as well because we're all listed on there. I'm also going to give a shout out right now to Children's Trust um, because yes. they're one of the Early Childhood Advisory Council partners. And um, as such, the programs that they, their local implementation agencies that they fund are listed on First Five. So a number of the Parents as Teachers um, and um, Healthy Families America programs that they offer throughout the state um, are listed there um, through those um, local implementation agencies. They're an excellent, excellent partner. We're very fortunate to be one of the uh, support resource centers through the Children's Trust. I, I agree. Uh, 
<clears throat> Thank you for walking us through the application. I, it, it is so helpful. You know, there's so much information and just to take the time to walk through, to take a look at what, what we're looking at, the information that's expected. So when a parent or grandparent or guardian sits down, they would have that information with them uh, even before they got started. Now, is there a way on this uh, application to uh, like save and start and work on it later? Absolutely. Uh, okay. Absolutely. And the reason is, is uh, we recognize that um, you might start an eligibility screener and say, mm, that's interesting. Let me think about it. Yes. Um, and then decide you want to come back and start your application. And so you do so and you you originally think, oh, I'll be able to, to do it all in one sitting. But then you realize um, there's a lot of information that they're required to ask. And so sometimes um, these uh, applications may be a little bit lengthy because they have to be to get all the information they need. And secondly, they may be required to. So it may not be exactly what they want to have to have you go through either. So, um, you know, you can uh, save it and come back later. Um, that way, if you need to collect any documents, you can do so and then have those ready to go when you come back. Or, um, you know, say you have a two-year-old and your two-year-old starts <laughs> screaming and uh, you can't concentrate and you have to attend to your two-year-old. Um, so you come back at 4 a.m. and finish your application. <laughs> um, so we made sure that um, that option was there because that's the reality of parents' lives. And uh, first five, like, you know, that buzzword we said earlier, human-centered design, we made sure that first five really met the needs of parents and it was built for parents. And so we took those types of things into account. And if you are ever using first five and you think, hmm, this is something that I thought of that could help it be more useful to families, I want to know about it because we really try to improve it and help it grow and help it grow with South Carolina so that it's an even better resource. Um, so if there are improvements that we can make that you see tell me because I really care about that. And we want this to belong to all of South Carolina. And thank you. Thank you for all those considerations. Because as you were walking through, I was just thinking of all of those variables that you mentioned, uh, uh, a young child needing whatever, uh, or I don't have the information with me right now. Um, and, and more. So exactly, exactly. So Rachel, if somebody um, is looking for childcare, and they need assistance, financial assistance. Is there a place for them to apply for that as well? Yes. So um, on First Five, um, we um, have worked with DSS as one of our partners, and we have two different ways that um, families can, well, actually three, three different ways through First Five that families can apply for child care assistance. Um, the first is through First Steps 4K Plus. And First Steps 4K Plus works with um, South Carolina Child Care Scholarships for Working Families. And um, that, that way they're able to um, provide child care uh, assistance to all the children in that four-year-old's household. So um, if um, the 4K student has a two-year-old sibling, that child can also um, receive a child care voucher um, to go to a child care center. And, and so, then I know, I'm go sorry, ahead. No, go ahead. I, I was going to say, I know that there are a lot of child care centers now that are charging a registration fee. Does that voucher cover the registration fee or is that separate from the voucher? I don't know the answer to that, um, but that's um, something that I would be willing to help find the answer to. Um, in, I know just from experience in your county that the registration fee is separate but we do have some parents that unfortunately it's, it could be expensive from a hundred to $300 um, outside of their weekly or monthly fee. Um, we've run into a couple of cases where families have had some issues trying to get that together. So I was just wondering about that and if there was any assistance for families to help cover that. No, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, and I wish I did. Okay. Thank uh, you. That's definitely something I can look into more and ask around about. Um, Great. And then oh, there's yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm happy to to find that out because that that can impact a lot of people. Um, the other way is 
um, we've partnered with child care um, DSS child care scholarships for working families and um, you can apply um, for those um, services directly through first five just like you can through their site um, it goes into the same automated system into their same application system and then um, also local partnerships. Some of the first steps local partnerships in South Carolina off, offer child care scholarships, um, and um, you know they you know families might be able to receive them that way. Exactly, exactly. We have we're very fortunate that we do have the first steps in our building, and we do provide vouchers for our teen students that are in school working to complete their education. So it's a great benefit to our families. That's wonderful. So what advice do you have for our parents? When should they start um, looking at this type of application? Um, and I know Cindy asked earlier, you know, uh, what age, but for a, a typical parent, do we start at two? Do what, what, what is your advice? Um, start when you know you're expecting. Oh, oh. <laughs> start, yeah, start when you know you're expecting. Um, you know, what we know is that like a lot of child care centers, um, you have to apply before your child's even born, right? I've heard that from lots of my friends and, and parents I know. Um, and then also, like I said, there's a number of um, programs available to families that they can enroll in before their child is even born. And, um, you know, that, that could be something that's really beneficial um, to your family and to you, um, you know, before you even come home from, you know, your delivery, place of delivery. Um, and then um, there may be things that your child can benefit from, um, you know, immediately on birth, like uh, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library may be available in your community. Um, and, um, you know, there are things too, like I, I know a lot of people think, well, um, you know, I don't think that I have the household circumstances or income that would help me qualify for some of these programs. That doesn't, that doesn't matter. There's so many programs available and m many of them um, have all different types of criteria or are open to everyone. And so we want families to know that South Carolina has so many resources to help children have you know, healthy, productive, everything that they need so that they can be successful services. Um, and so that's what First Five is about. We want families who move here to feel proud that this is a resource for them and that they have things um, available to help their families. Thank you. And that is truly just another awesome reason about why South Carolina has such great resources. And it takes our champions like you, Rachel, to bring it to our parents and you, Cindy, and everyone who works with you all. Um, to to let our parents know, and it just also, you know, it, I'm from a different generation and just thinking about now when we have our parents who first find out that they are expecting to begin this process is such a, a, a new concept, but so very important. So exactly. uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're bringing it to the forefront. Cindy? Yeah. No, I was just going to put in a shameless plug, if you don't mind. At, <laughs> no, no. at Parent Smart, we do offer parents as teachers, and we do work with families who are expecting, and like I said before, through age five. So if parents do have questions or need help navigating first five, or like Rachel said, you start to apply for child care, but we could actually start working with you to empower you as your child's first teacher when you find out that you're expecting. And there are programs, parents as teachers programs across the state yes. um, that First Five can help link you to through their application process. Well, I thank you uh, really both so much because you are both Yes, such a, a, a wealth uh, of, of great information and bringing it to our community and beyond. Before we go to closing, uh, Rachel, is there anything else that you'd like to share for this evening? No, um, except that I would love to hear from anyone who has questions or um, if uh, any uh, direct service providers are watching and you want first five materials or Palmetto pre-K materials, we can have those mailed um, at no cost to you. Um, and so we're happy to, to send those out to share in uh, any clinics or waiting areas, um, you know, to help more families find out about resources. Excellent. And, and right in front of us are two um, 
<clears throat> email addresses. You can either go to Rachel's or the first five sc.org. And uh, I, we know that they will get a response right away. Cindy, along that line, um, we've mentioned Parent Smart and other areas, goes right along with what we're talking about tonight. Uh, how can um, our viewers get a hold of either you and or programs that we may have at Parent Smart? Parents can look on our district website under families, or they can reach out to us through Facebook or Instagram uh, and just search Parent Smart. Or they can contact us at 803-981-1557. Again, that's 803-981-1557. And we'll be happy to try to connect them or if we can be a resource to them. And Rachel, I've added your email uh, on the uh, chat on the Facebook page as well so that they have all three of the links Great. to you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And if you'll also on the chat, put your phone number, Cindy, that you just talked about. I'd like you to also add our Rock Hill yeah. Mental Health Resource Hotline. And that is 803-324-7464. <clears throat> Great resources there, uh, particularly for uh, families that um, have mental health issues and, and may be in crisis. Um, so we thank you again for sharing this evening with us and sharing your information, walking us through the application. Hopefully our families are feeling less anxious, less stressed, and even more uh, important knowing that this is available and all the, the wonderful opportunities and resources that are available for them. So I thank you, Rachel Hent Moore, and always thank you, Cindy Tubman Kimmel. You're Just very welcome. Pleasure. And to our community, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope that we see you and you see us uh, for the many weeks to come. Remember Thursday nights, six to seven, uh, access through Facebook or the Rock Hill. Um, help me now. Uh, the Rock Hill Facebook page, Parent Academy Facebook page. <laughs> Parent Academy, but I was, oh, YouTube. I was also thinking of YouTube. Yes, thank you. Exactly. Just a block there. And we look forward to seeing you every night. We have great presentations uh, in store for you. Have a wonderful night. Stay dry. It's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, stay warm. And have a wonderful night. And we will see you soon. Good night. <laughs>